Well, I'm Patrick Ocheng. Uh, I work at uh, Ujamaa Center, which is a uh, non-governmental organization in Mombasa that has been around for the last uh, 20 years. Essentially, we are about social justice, human rights, and uh, in particular, land rights has been our main forte. Uh, since we started uh, way back in 2000. As a person, I like being referred to as an activist because that's what I do daily. I started doing uh, human rights work here in Nairobi and I was engaged with uh, human rights and constitutional change uh, for quite some time before I moved to Mombasa. And I went to Mombasa in 1999 uh, November. Then there was a project on urban governance uh, that was being done by a former mayor who had uh, resigned from mayorship, but he was still very concerned with you know the state of the city, the environment in the city, the planning, uh, generally the outlook of life and the standards of living there. So I was invited to help implement this project. Uh, then we were working for an institution known as Citizens Baraza, which simply put is uh, a forum where citizens meet regularly to discuss you know, the state of their locality, the services that are being offered by the municipal authority and so on, and some of the things they could do to improve uh, their situation. And uh, this program was supported by the International Development Research Center, IDRC, Ford Foundation, and uh, a university in Canada. So we, we were holding discussions around the Mombasa we want, you know, the kind of city that we would like to live in, and the vision that we would have for that future. And a lot of that was inspired by the discussions of the UN, if you remember, what was called Agenda 21, uh, you know, that was provoking cities to begin thinking uh, about how they could become better cities. So in a sense, me who was doing human rights, I uh, found myself doing you know, a lot of urban governance stuff and what really it takes to manage a city. And the whole challenge of garbage, roads and housing, you know, and a whole lot of things that a lot of us in the non-state sector, you know, sometimes don't uh, interact with unless you are in, in, in the, the sector that does this. Now, having done this work for two and a half years, uh, when my stint there, you know, ended, uh, I contemplated, you know, coming back to Nairobi to do the usual stuff that I'm doing in Nairobi. Mombasa is one of those places in this country we go for holidays. But none of us ever thinks that it's a place you can settle. In fact, everybody goes there temporarily on visits uh, with, with the intentions of coming back. Twenty years later, <laughs> I am still there. Yeah, but that's what led us to start uh, Ujama, uh, which, as the name suggests, uh, is a concept we borrowed from Tanzania. Ujama essentially means solidarity, you know, self-government, self-organizing, and really looking at communities as entities that could organize themselves and you know have their own self-reliance, so that they don't have to depend really on you know state support entirely. That they could do things within their own capacities, develop their own local economies and you know, proceed with life without having to heavily rely on you know, outside support. We thought that starting a, a, an institution that would challenge uh, communities to think very seriously about alternatives to mainstream processes that they have been familiar with it was what inspired us to, to name it Ujama and to program around community building. Uh, essentially for us, uh, we had done two years 
and understood the context. And the context was one where everybody in the region feels alienated. It's a place where people talk about marginalization. And in fact, the challenges that you see in the coast are not the kind of challenges you find in the rest of the country. So we thought we need to do something very fundamental if we were to change the circumstances there. And so even naming the institution was important, you know, so that it could be something that could inspire and interest people uh, to want to have the curiosity to find out what does this institution do. And so each time people were curious, uh, we found constituency. You know, and therefore, in a sense, our intentions were beginning to concretize. So what we decided to do was to then begin a very in-depth understanding of what really were the issues 